Hey crafty friends, today I'm sharing two cards that I created using Ink on 3's Koi Pond stamp set along with two stencils named Pondy and Wavy. So there's definitely an ocean theme going on with today's cards. To start off the card, I stamped out the three koi fish from the stamp set onto Canson XL watercolor paper using Fade Out ink. If you haven't heard of Fade Out, it's an ink that I use for no line coloring and it stamps out a very neutral color. And normally I'll stamp it two times because it, the color is very light. However, because I am stamping on watercolor paper, I'm stamping out three times today just to make sure that I get the details stamped out. So normally I use fade out ink for Copic coloring. However, I kept seeing different design team cards and videos about them watercoloring these koi fish and they looked super gorgeous so I just had to try it. I normally don't watercolor at all. I just am very afraid of it because I like having the control of a Copic marker and watercolors kind of force you to be a little bit more relaxed with your coloring which I find very hard to do. I'm working on it but it's just still really hard for me. So for my watercoloring, I'm using Ink on 3's Altier inks. These inks come in the form of an ink pad or a reinker. And today I'm using the reinkers by dropping them onto my glass mat, adding a bit of water, and I'll mix it and pick up the color directly from the glass. Before I started filming this particular card, I actually tested out coloring a panel for fun and I used mainly oranges and yellows which are typical colors for koi fish and I've said before that I normally tend to go with the normal colors for critters and I just ended up experimenting with these koi fish and as you can see I used rainbow colors so I'm only using two colors each for each of the fish but it looks really cool. And the cool thing about Ink on 3 is that it is a neutral color and it has the ability to absorb the color that you lay on top of it. So this koi stamp set has a ton of details within the koi fish. It has the scales, it has its tails, and as you can see, as I'm watercoloring it, the details are being picked up by the colors. If I'm putting green on top of it, that ink absorbs that green color. Same for the purple fish. It just absorbs that purple color into the scales. So it's very cool and it shows all the little details and you don't even have to worry about it. I might have sped this up, but it didn't take very much time to color these fish and the only time that I had to worry about being careful about my coloring it was just to add dimension onto the fish and I did just did that by adding another layer of color near its body so it looks a little bit more rounded so around the little scales and the little fins that's where I put in my darker color but I just don't have to worry about coloring the scales carefully or anything like that and it turned out really pretty so I really liked how these came out. Like I said I am not a watercolorist by any means. It's something that is super intimidating to me. It's just one of those things where I'm just comfortable with Copic markers and even colored pencils. Watercolor is on my crafty bucket list, something that I want to be good at. It's just I, I feel like I just can't lose the control that watercolor kind of offers because you have to mix it with water and let it uh, mix freely and all of that. But I realized that definitely when you watercolor, don't use very much water. All you need is a damp brush. So once I finish coloring all the little fish, I go in with black and just uh, add the little details for the eyes and the whiskers on the fish. So for my backgrounds, I actually went in to this card not knowing exactly what to do. I decided to do two card panels, or at least start with two card panels and see where it took me. For this first card panel, I'm using the wavy stencil with the LTA ink pads 
and I'm just putting um, the colors down using a blending foam and I decided to go with rainbow colors. I actually had no idea where I was gonna go with this. I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna create a background, see where it takes me, and I'll work with what I have. So I ended up doing a rainbow background because everyone loves rainbows, and how can you go wrong? So once I finish this background, I pulled off the stencil and I thought the white was too stark. So I went in with whatever ink that was left on the blending foam and just went in to soften the white a little bit more and I was a lot happier with how it looked. So I ended up only using three fish for this background, which actually seems like a lot. It seems a little crowded, but it worked. So I had a second panel to create and I had two fish remaining. I decided that I was going to use the same colors that I colored the fish. So it was the purple, red, orange, and yellow. So I just went in diagonally and added those colors and it really worked out. I had even contemplating for this card to create five different uh, cards, one for each of the fish, but I thought that putting them together was a little bit nicer and it felt like they were in a pond together. For the first card, I'm using one of the sentiments from the Koi Pond stamp set. I'm just stamping out the swimming by to say hi, and I'll be cutting it that on matting it and matting it on black cardstock. For my second sentiment, I needed those sentiment to take up a little bit more space. So I'm stamping out a sentiment from the Hey Gorgeous stamp set onto a larger strip of black cardstock. It just needed to take up more space because I only had two fish to work with this card background so I wanted the sentiment to kind of pop off the paper. So once I have all the little pieces to both of my cards I will go ahead and adhere everything. For the first card I am adding three of the fish and I'm at putting them where their matching colors are. So the fish that is colored in red and orange will go at the top of that rainbow panel and the yellow and green will go in the middle and then the blue and purple will go at the bottom of the card. And I thought about mixing it around but I, I was just matchy matchy here and I really liked it. The sentiment is small enough where it doesn't look super crowded but you're able to zone in on it because of the black frame of the sentiment. So I'll just adhere it using liquid glue and that was pretty easy to do. Canson XL watercolor paper is a little thick so I had to take a little bit more time to press down and make sure it dried before I let go of the fish and some parts kind of wanted to pull up on the paper but you just press it down and you should be fine. So for the second card, I wanted the sentiment strip to be right in the middle and the fish to kind of surround it because the two fish kind of make a circle and I thought it would be really cute. I had a harder time deciding like if I wanted the purple one on top or the yellow one on top, but it ended up working out um, however which way that I ended up doing it. They both pop off the card panel because of all the colors, so I didn't really have to worry about it. To finish off this card, I wanted to add some embellishments. I'm using Trini Stamps bubble blower embellishments that look like little bubbles and I thought it was perfect because this is an underwater scene even though it's completely rainbow and colorful but I kind of like how this turned out. This isn't one of my typical simple and clean colored cards. It's just all color so I and I really liked how just the water coloring on the fade out ink look. So I think I might be trying out the same stamp set using fade out, but with Copic colors, which Copic colors are a little bit hard to blend like different colors. So I think the water colors make it really easy just because they mix in themselves and it looks a little bit more fluid where Copics, you have to pick the right colors to be able to merge two colors and blend them for it to look seamlessly. So I'm kind of really excited about how these turned out and I hope you guys liked them too. If you haven't tried fade out ink with watercolors for detailed stamp sets like this koi fish, I suggest you do because I think it would look super awesome. That is it for today's two cards. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time for another video. Have a great day. Bye!